Welcome to Current Medicine. This is an amazing show. I'm thrilled and excited that we are co-hosting with my dear colleague, Professor Dr. Ahmed Ural. This is Dr. Yossalim Salai, physician, entrepreneur, and venture architect. We received really interesting points coming from our viewers in Africa. They said, okay, so I have this problem, but I really don't know if it is really the right or the wrong solution. So there are many things in medicine that we think is right is actually wrong and versus anything that we think is wrong is right. So that's why with my dear colleague Ahmed Ural, I will actually challenge because I'm a physician entrepreneur and he's the expert and he will give us a solution. So I hope you will like this format. Uh, dear Ahmed, welcome again uh, to this amazing show and this was your idea. So thank you for uh, co-hosting this show with me. I thank you for your kind invitation and providing me this opportunity personally, you and the Natural TV. Thank you. So, dear Ahmed, uh, in terms of sleep, today we're going to talk about sleep. As we all know, in the United States, there are more than 22 million people who are complaining of sleep problems. Sleep is really the source, and if you have a obstructive sleep apnea or other problems, it can cause many issues that probably you will mention, uh, from daytime drowsiness to fatigue, and inefficiency during the day. Uh, this is a problem in the United States. Is this also a big problem in Africa? Well, actually, it's a big problem worldwide. Okay. That why it, it's growing as such a uh, big problem is that we almost spend one third of our lives during sleep, mm -hmm. almost eight hours, let's yes. say, in average, from childhood uh, until the elder, or elder age. Secondly, we know that some people die during sleep, young mm -hmm. and people without any diseases. It is estimated that a certain amount of these people who die during sleep are undiagnosed obstructive sleep, sleep apnea patients. This is a very critical issue. It's not a fully proven idea, but at least some of the people who are lost, who are dead, who, are, who die uh, during their sleep at night are supposed to be suffering from obstructive sleep apnea. Wow. And due to incre increasing life expectancy and improved quality of life, people are living longer lives nowadays and their muscle tonus is de decreasing by time, which amplifies the likelihood of obstructive sleep apnea. Due to these conditions, we are facing up with a growing number of people suffering from sleep disorders, including uh, snoring and sleep apnea. I so see. it's a current and growing problem. So, how do I understand I have sleep apnea? What are the symptoms of sleep apnea? Well, there are many symptoms for sleep apnea, but the main problem with these symptoms are that, one, you cannot by yourself detect the symptom. Mm -hmm. The person who accompany you during sleep or who see you during your sleep will know that you are snoring or you are keeping breathless during mm -hmm. your sleep. Mm -hmm. So it's difficult to detect by yourself. Okay. You may have a sensation of choke or aspiration during sleep and wake up suddenly, but this doesn't occur in all of the patients. So the direct diagnosis of snoring and sleep apnea is aided by the spouse or friend of the patient rather than the patient him or herself. Mm -hmm. Secondly, there are many symptoms which seem to be a bit unrelated to the uh, sleep disorder. For instance, uh, memory disorders, weight gain or failure of loss, uh, loss of weight, mm -hmm. uh, or uh, decreased work performances, uh, excessive daytime sleepiness, yes. uh, these conditions may remind the possibility of any, possible, any sleep disorder or uh, sleep problem, including obstructive sleep apnea. Okay. And how do you diagnose? So when a patient comes to you, you, you know, how do you diagnose sleep apnea? In order to make the accurate diagnosis of sleep apnea, we need to have polysomnography. It means you have to refer the patient, endorse the patient to a sleep center. Mm -hmm. He or she must stay there for one night, sleep there, and certain parameters will be recorded. And after the record of these parameters, a formula, using some formula, we are going to calculate many parameters. Apnea, hypopnea, Index is the critical parameter that makes us diagnose the patient, whether he or she has obstructive sleep apnea or not. But here, there's a challenge, challenge one. Some people cannot sleep at any place rather than their homes. Exactly. And when you send the patient to the sleep center, in the morning the patient comes with a 
crystal clear. Uh, because you couldn't yeah, sleep. yeah, but but they claim that I couldn't sleep during the time in the laboratory, so this may not be correct. For these patients, we have mobile some mobile devices. They are called watch pads. Mm -hmm. You attach the patient with a watch pad, do the setting and adjustment, send him or her to the to their own home and tell them to come uh, the next day in the morning and we take the device out and get the record out. Okay. This is another option, but this is less reliable, but if, if such a condition exists, there's nothing to do. Exactly. So polysomnogram is the main parameter that we, uh, that's used for diagnosis. And, you know, what are the risks of having sleep apnea? I mean, you said you can even yeah. die, but yeah. uh, if someone is, I mean, I will ask the, also the treatment of sleep apnea, but what are the risks if you are not getting treatment? Many conditions are associated with sleep disorders, including snoring and obstructive sleep apnea. First, the social life of the patient will be affected adversely. Mm -hmm. I mean, if uh, he, he's sleeping, he's not living alone, the other people will be disturbed due to the voice of the noise. First, yes. this is an important social parameter, uh, uh, social problem. Beyond that, cardiovascular disorders due to hypoxia, when you cannot transfer sufficient oxygen inside due to obstruction of your upper airway is a certain risk. We know that heart diseases or ischemic heart diseases are more often or more frequent in these patients. This is another condition. Also cerebrovascular occlusion, stroke, is more frequent in these patients. Mm -hmm. So sleep apnea is, brings about certain metabolic, cardiovascular and neurological risks. In addition, traffic in traffic accidents, sometimes drivers sleep while they are sleeping, and some of these people have obstructive sleep apnea because they can't sleep sufficiently at night, and when they drive, they start sleeping on, on the course, and certain hazardous events may occur yeah. due to this lack of, of yeah. course, many accidents that we can't understand how it happens in a smooth traffic like this may ensource from such conditions. Wow. Uh, so, uh, how do we treat sleep apnea? I think this is also an important challenge I want you to answer. Is there a certain treatment? Is it challenging uh, to get the treatment? Well, there are certain treatment regimen, but the algorithm must be, must be administered on, a, on an individualized basis for every patient. Mm -hmm. I think it's called haute couture, the tailored according yes. to for, for one person specifically. I mean, you cannot generalize one measure to all the population. Yeah. First of all, I'd like to stress that the severity of the sleep apnea is critical. Is it mild, moderate, or severe? Because everything changes according to these grading. Mm -hmm. When we refer the patient for polysomnogram, we have the apnea hypopnea index. And if it's mild, surgery is more appropriate for these patients. If it's moderate, you can either administer, employ surgery or CPAP. Some, we have some devices called yes. continuous positive airway pressure or, or bi-level airway pressure. These devices apply the external medium's air into the airway directly and they overcome the pressure of closure of the upper airway. But it's a bit uncomfortable to I use see. it every night. because the, the compliance decreases. If the patient has severe apnea, you, you will use CPAP or BPAP, by level PAP, but surgery can be used as an adjunctive or assisting measure. The, the device is used through the nose yes. and the patients, if the patient has any blockage in the nose, they should be removed. The patient shouldn't have uh, big uh, polyps in the nose, sure. uh, enlarged concha turbinates or septal deviation. So we can make still surgery, but it's not curative. It's I in see. order to uh, facilitate the use of CPAP. One more condition I'd like to stress is that if the patient is overweight or smoking or consumes alcohol or some drugs, they should be eliminated, but their um, contribution to the treatment is only one or two grade alleviation generally. I mean, if you have a severe apnea patient who is morbidly obese, loss of weight is necessary. He or she should lose weight, but usually the, pain, the, the patient cannot become healthy by only weight loss. Generally, it should be assisted with another measure like surgery or... Um, maybe CPAP if it comes to moderate. Our aim is to decrease the grade of the apnea first Severity. and if possible to, to jump the critical barrier at the level of mild apnea to the normal patient. I it's see. critical issue. 
So losing weight cannot be always a solution. It is helpful, definitely, but has to be combined under an expert like yourself so they can be uh, treated, like you said, hot couture and be ready for the right treatment based on individual patient. And uh, let's say some patient use CPAP and they cannot really uh, orient themselves. Many of them, they say, okay, enough. Some feel very uh, happy after getting the CPAP in the morning. They are more you know, uh, vivid. They are able to function better. They had a better sleep. But some, they cannot really adjust with the CPAP. For those patients, what do you do? This is a very frequent problem. As I told, the CPAP is appropriate for, mild, uh, for moderate or severe apnea patients. So what we try to do here is that we are trying to shift the patient to mild oh. condition or moderate condition, which is suitable for surgery. Okay. Surgery provides you a quick solution, but it has other risks, risks such as general anesthesia or some pain or discomfort. So if there's a patient who is not compliant with CPAP, we offer cessation of smoking if he or she sure. smokes. Uh, cessation of use of alcohol or drugs or those conditions and lose weight okay. and we try to bring this patient into the suitable range for surgery by lifestyle modification sure yeah. Yeah. sure okay. if possible we don't want the patients to work at night okay of course there are some conditions you have to work having a regular yeah. sleep having a night. regular work schedule is very important I see. because if the patient works on a uh, night uh, adjusted basis it changes all the metabolism and it's more difficult to handle. And uh, how, uh, what is the outcome of the surgeries? When you do the surgery, what do, should we expect as an outcome for the patient? I always, we always, uh, actually, we always uh, inform the patient in such a fashion. We tell them surgery is only a part of your treatment. Mm -hmm lifestyle modification including dietary change of dietary habits and starting a suitable exercise modality are at least as important or maybe more important than surgery or CPAP. Okay. Half of work is mine, I will operate you and the resting half is yours. You will okay. start your diet and you will start exercising but diet and exercise must be programmed by a professional. Perfect. I mean, I see some of my operated patients while they're walking in the street and sometimes I catch them in the patisserias eating some cakes. That's they great. say, okay, I, I had my walk, I did my exercise, so this is my gift. I am having my uh, dessert now. It's not suitable actually. Excellent. Thank you. So ladies and gentlemen, if you have any questions, please send to the WhatsApp number that we're showing now. We will also an answer your questions in our future episodes. So if you have any questions about sleep, feel free to ask them now or other health issues. So we can also modify and prepare our programs with Professor Dr. Ahmed Ural based on your request. Uh, dear uh, Ahmed, anything else you want to mention about sleep and sleep disorder before we close this uh, episode? Well, uh, I'd like to emphasize that every person has his or her own body uh, texture, lifestyle, metabolism. So rather than generalizing the use of drugs, medications or surgical methods, treatment and diagnosis and approach to patients of this group, sleep disorder group, must be planned on an individualized basis. And the compliance of the patient for the lifestyle modification is at least or maybe more important than the conventional treatment methods such as surgery or CPAP. Excellent. This is the critical point. Ahmed Ural, thank you very much for uh, this amazing show. Looking forward to discussing many different topics together and really providing the authentic source uh, in current medicine to our viewers. Inshallah. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the end of our uh, first show with my dear colleague, Professor Dr. Ahmed Ural. This is Dr. Yawas Selim Salai, physician, entrepreneur, and venture architect. Stay tuned to Current Medicine. Looking forward to discussing really very interesting topic, starting now with sleep and many others together. Take care and all the best. Bye.